Okay, our next plant is number 110. This is Camellia sasanqua, one of our really interesting um, common names here. This is the sasanqua camellia. So you can see the utility of common names often. So the two most common camellias that are grown are uh, Camellia sasanqua that we have here, which is going to be a fall winter flowering, and Camellia japonica, which is winter spring uh, flowering. Camellia sasanqua is the smaller leaf and smaller flower of the two and probably a little rare in cultivation. There's uh, um, Camellia japonica is pretty darn ubiquitous. But the leaves of both are quite coriaceous. They're more so in uh, Camellia japonica. They tend to be thicker, even more um, leathery to the point of feeling uh, fake, like plastic. They also often look, flake, look fake. You can see how floriferous this, this one is, uh, but both Camellia sasanqua and Camellia japonica are prized for their very large flowers in uh, many different colors. Um, and as you can see here, this Camellia uh, sasanqua has been uh, sheared pretty tight. Uh, not to my taste, I, I prefer plants to look a little bit more naturalized than this, but it does show you that uh, it does tolerate pruning and um, uh, can be put in a formal garden. Uh, another aspect, oftentimes if you go into a garden center, you'll see um, azalea and camellia uh, fertilizer. And what that is, it's, it's a fertilizer <clears throat> that's designed to lower the pH. Okay, so uh, camellias, along with uh, most ericaceous plants, those in ericaceae, including your azaleas and rhododendrons, prefer a low pH. And so uh, these do benefit uh, greatly from high organic matter and a low pH, well-drained soil. So that is uh, Camellia sasanqua can be a really great impact in the landscape.